The President has announced a new visa policy for Nigeria. Its aim, it says, is to attract innovation, specialized skills and knowledge from abroad to complement local capacity. It is also expected to support the attainment of globally competitive economy for Nigeria by building on the efforts of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council. It is also expected to attract foreign direct investment and boost tourism without compromising national security. In his remarks, the Minister of Interior, Ralph Aregbe Shola, said the visa policy took into consideration specific needs of foreigners who would want to visit the country without compromising the security of the country. Some of the features of the NVP 2020 include visa on arrival for African Union nationals, increasing the classes of visas from 6 to 75, creation of visa codes for all classes of visas and introduction of the e-visas. To look at the business and international dimensions to this new policy, Ambassador Wallace Williams joined us in the studio. He's a renowned poet, Pan-Africanist, and Honorary Consul General of Antigua and Barbuda to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, certainly. I know you're aware of the new visa policy in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The aim being one, we have um, to attract innovation, specialized skills, uh, knowledge from abroad to complement what we currently have in Nigeria. Do you see that um, taking you? Yes. Very positive. It's long overdue. Uh, first of all, let me uh, just say thanks for having Antigua and Barbuda being featured. <laughs> we are part of the African Union now as the sixth region of the, uh, the Caribbean, is now the sixth region of the African Union. And uh, just to say that Antigua and Barbuda is following in similar footsteps. We have visa on arrival because for tourism and for the drive for manufacturers to come, you know, we are making it easy for Africans yeah. uh, and other countries to come to the country. So it's a welcome uh, news for Africans and Africans in the diaspora. Um, I think the government realizing, for example, that Ghana has opened up its country with visa on arrival, making it easy for African Americans, Africans in the diaspora, and Africans within the continent to come. It is, it is uh, looking at that issue that Ghana will probably run ahead of Nigeria if they don't do that. Um, on the issue of getting skills in, there are so many uh, African Americans and others who have skills that would love to come to Nigeria and uh, promote those skills which will enhance the economy and which will give us innovative edges, especially in software, etc. There are so many of that in medical, etc. That's also good. The aspect of security and security, that has to be dealt with at the border. As you are coming in, um, they still have the right to refuse you right? Um, but you can be vetted at the border and you can also be tracked, I suppose, if you have proper architecture, security architecture in place to ensure, you know, from cyber security to, you mm -hmm. know, tracking, that uh, the individuals who are coming in uh, are going to be there for good reasons. If you have any reason to suspect that they are not going to be enhancing positively your country, you can ask them to leave. That is before they get in, or if you track or realize that they've got into some sort of uh, misdemeanor, mm. they can also be deported. In terms of uh, financial remuneration, which is certainly some, a challenge for some people, where you know, you're either underpaid, do you think the government would also put this into consideration such that if anyone has to come all the way from their country to come and support whatever is currently on ground, then you know, the financial remuneration would complement whatever skill they're bringing on board? Well, Obviously, if they are coming to work for a foreign uh, um, a company, they should be paid the kind of packages that uh, they pay their people abroad. I'll tell you an example. Um, in Ghana, for example, I was there um, heading a conference on uh, oil and gas and found out that uh, the uh, foreign company uh, was bringing their own welders, etc., and paying them in dollars whilst they're paying Ghanaians uh, in cities and uh, uh, almost one-tenth or one-hundredth even, in some instances, what they will pay their foreigners. So I think if people are coming and they are going to be working for a foreign company here, they must be remunerated with the same packages that they pay expats. So do you, inter do you um, potentially see this boosting our business relations between you know, Nigeria and other African countries? Of course, of course. I mean... It is part, part of what I, as a Pan-Africanist, a staunch 
Pan-Africanist and as a founder of Africacy, which is Africans doing it for themselves, by themselves, African solutions to African problems. Mm -hmm. And that is the mantra of my organization. Um, we need to open up travel, intra intracontinental travel, and we need to open up the, the right uh, to be able to go and work in each other's countries. In the Caribbean, for example, they have uh, CARICOM. And CARICOM allows members of uh, the Caribbean community to go to each other's country. Once you're skilled, you know, and, and go and offer something positive. So some skills may not be resident in that particular country, but you can go to another, uh, you can get another Caribbean country uh, member to come and work with that particular skill. It might be in medicine, it might be in computers, it might be in meteorology, something specific that mm -hmm. the country may be too small. And economic ties uh, grows from well, not there. Not only that, you may not have had accelerated education in specific skills areas. Everybody will have probably the basic ed education, but specialization in certain areas. Some countries have more than others, like for example, yes, Trinidad certainly. and Tobago, Jamaica, Barbados. They tend to have more, uh, you know, uh, what I would call different skill sets than a smaller country like, say, Grenada or St. Lucia, who may just have, you know, just enough of a population to skill set for what they need. But when something specific comes up, they may have to borrow from the other mm. CARICOM countries. So it's the same in Africa. Um, you know, Nigeria may want some specific skills from South Africa. South Africa may want some specific skills from Nigeria. Now that we're we, good at. Well, moving forward, you realize that um, while the federal government is also looking to get more foreign direct investments from the international community, security still remains a major challenge in the country. And as you may know, as you well may know, investors are also looking for safe havens yes. to, draw, to, to deposit their money so that taking it out would not be a problem. Yes. Well, I think that, 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 that borders on the financial system. That borders on companies and profits. If you come into a particular country and the financial system says you can come, you have uh, tax holidays, you can make your profit, you can leave, uh, leave with it, I don't think security becomes the challenge. I think it's the financial security you're talking about. You know, um, if you're talking about security general, that's another matter. Because, I mean, when you compare, and that's why you see that we have more foreign portfolio investment coming into the country than foreign direct investment. This would, when, you come, when you talk about the foreign direct investment, we're talking about building of infrastructures so, or, you know, companies, manufacturing companies that would now bring about more jobs, foreign portfolio investments, you can take out your money if it's in the stock market. You know? mm -hmm. But then this is what we need here in Nigeria. But investors, I don't know. Well, well, what I confidence think, do I, I they have? I think we have to have a different approach. Manufacturing, yes, does um, uh, uh, provide more jobs and you have to look more in the medium to long term for return on your investment. As a businessman, you know, I would say that is what a manufacturer would look at. I think what manufacturers have to do is perhaps, and I have to again mention the Ghana model. What Ghana has now said and done is that every industry coming into Ghana must be in a specific location and must partner with the locals. So okay. that way there is longevity for that manufacturing company. There's the involvement. Loyal to yeah, them. there's involvement yes, with yes. the uh, locals. The locals have an interest in that company remaining and staying because it's providing jobs in their locale. So maybe Nigeria needs to adopt that policy. You come in as a manufacturer, yes, we give you safe haven, we give you tax holidays, mm -hmm. employ locals, not bring your own people and then you leave when you think, uh, you know, things are getting a little bit too hot for you and you have made enough money and you, 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 you yes. run away. No, come in, partner with the country and the local and don't have too many of the same concentrated in the same area. Same area. So we have 36 states, 36 different types of manufacturers should locate in locales. So you go into a particular locale in that state. Even if you're going to have another manufacturer in that same state, it must be different. So perhaps you're doing tomatoes in Benue, uh, tomato juice, somebody else does mango, mm -hmm. uh, somebody goes to uh, where they have the oranges, the Arabic, gum Arabic, etc. And they are partnering with the locals, the local farmers, etc., who may form themselves into cooperatives. And they're also employed in the factory. And they're learning skills. Mm -hmm. So if they themselves want to set up, you know, they can set up because, of course, it's a free economy and compete. But at least if you have employed them, you'll be creating 
jobs and also you'll be getting loyalty. Loyalty, which is the basically the primary the thing key. necessary. The and then um, what, other, what other ways or methods do you think the government can adopt in order to you know, boost co investor confidence? Well, of course, security is the main thing. Are they going to be protected carrying out their jobs? Um, uh, is the area where they are going to locate going to be protected in terms of protection of one, their, uh, their company and their personnel. Now, I think that is the main issue that you're probably leading to that many people are now worried about bringing in investment in an environment that they feel there's a high premium risk. Mm -hmm. Because when people are doing uh, an analysis of a country uh, as to where to put their money, or quite right, where to put the money, they do what is called a premium risk analysis, which involves political risks, stability, uh, security, security of personnel, security of money, security of their, uh, their uh, manufacturing. Or Sound their labor company. relations, financial the labor, security, exactly. economic security, political security. security. Yes, they do that. that. That is what we call a premium, premium risk, risk, country risk. What, why am I going into this country? Can I make enough money, uh, return on investment, on my investment, right? Most people are looking at least, banks are only giving you wherever you are in the world, 6% at the most, right? But people are looking, okay, if I put my money in South Africa or in Nigeria, am I gonna get 25% back mm -hmm. on it, mm -hmm. 30% over the term? They know, well, look, this makes financial sense. So they do an analysis with regards to where to put that money. Now, when they do a short list, should I go Ghana or should I go Nigeria? All right, that, that, that becomes that becomes the short listing. Okay, finally, because of time, let's just um, touch a bit on this. Uh, Nigeria has dropped, reduced the cost of visa charges for citizens of the U.S. from one eighty dollars to one sixty dollars. And on the other hand, we have the U.S. placing you know re visa restriction on uh, for immigration on Nigerians. Well. You know, normally in the diplomatic world, it's called reciprocity. 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 <laughs> uh, it's a reciprocal thing. Reciprocity, right? yes. Yeah, reciprocity. Um, and uh, I, I think Nigeria is doing that to, to say to the U.S., okay, you know, uh, reciprocally, uh, let's look at, um, you know, other, you, options, uh, uh, yeah. other options as well. I know if you looked at the news that uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Minister of uh, the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, uh, just a week ago, they, they, they had agreements um, in place uh, to make sure that, you know, those type of situations are reversed. Um, but the United States, like any other country, has the right um, to put visa restrictions mm -hmm. based on intelligence and information they have that you and I may not have. They may know a little bit more about a particular country, why they place these restrictions. Is it a security issue? Is it an overstay issue that you have overstayed in the country? Uh, I mean, there's a statistic that's saying most Nigerians mm -hmm. who visit the US, 90% of them don't return. So maybe they've used that statistic. Um, uh, a lot of Americans who have come here have mentioned that maybe in the areas that they have gone to, uh, there's a security risk they would have taken that into their consideration. consideration. So all those things they'll put, put into together. Say, yes, and say, okay, uh, these countries, for this particular time period, maybe it might be six months, maybe three mm -hmm. months, a year, let's monitor the situation and talk to the government. They have backdoor diplomacy. And can you put these things into place so that we can ease this restriction or remove it? All right, so then. it's up to the relationship between the two countries. And I think uh, uh, Nigerian Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Secretary of State in the US I've already started that process. Thank you so much, Ambassador. For the sake of time, that's all we can have. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very year. much. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all on business as others are. I am Irene Ubani.